Let me go and show you some more disturbing figures. And this is the stuff that we need to know. But once we know this here, then maybe we might turn around and act like we got some sense. Because all of the problems that we got, we inherited. But we ain't doing no better because we're doing worse than what our forefathers have. Just like Obama. He inherited this thing from Bush and all of the other presidents before him, right? But guess what? He ain't doing no better. We inherited this thing, and we aren't doing any better. So therefore, everything that we got, we deserve it. Now, 3,744 years of existence as a people. Now, I'm going to show you something. 2,832 of them years have been years of Slavery. When you subtract 2,832 years from 3,744, that leaves you with 912 years. From the existence of a people, we have only been free for 912 years. So all of this magnificence and glory that we experienced, it was in a short period of time. We parted hard <laughs> and fast because the majority of our existence has been one of slavery. Those 2,832 years of slavery, they equal the 400 years that we was in captivity in Egypt, the 490 years that we was in slavery to Babylon, and the 1,942 years since Titus scattered us and we've been in slavery into the Mediterranean world. When you add all of that up, you get the 2,832. When you subtract that from the time of our existence, that show you how long we have been free as a people, 912 years. We've been slaves for so long, we don't know what it's like to be free. We have been slaves for so long that it made the Lord ask the question. Let's go into Jeremiah, the second chapter, and see what the Lord had to say. It made the Lord ask the question. Jeremiah, chapter 2, and we're going to start reading in verse 10. Jeremiah 2 and verse 10. Jeremiah 2 and 10. All right, my brother, go ahead. Will pass over the isles of Chittim and see, and see in Takeda, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Now the Lord is telling the prophet Jeremiah to look all over the world, and look at all these different people, and see if there has ever been such a thing. Go ahead. Has a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. You see that? Ain't nobody else changed their god but us. We are the only people who have changed our glory for that which do not profit. Go ahead on and read. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. And he's telling the world to be afraid and be horrified for this because the people that were supposed to teach you, they have fallen. So if the people who are supposed to teach you have fallen, then what's going to happen to the rest of the world? And what's happening to this world? It's falling. That's why I say, sometimes you got to ask yourself, what part have I played in this mess that we in? And if you know your history and you look at what's going on, we played a big part of the mess that this world is in because we have fallen. And it has caused the Lord to say, look and be horribly afraid, O heaven and earth, because of what's been going on with this people. Go ahead on and read. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. We have turned our back on the true and living God, and we have adopted gods that are no gods, wherein there is no profit in serving them. Go ahead on and read. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? 
Why is he spoiled? You see what the Lord say? Are we servants? Are we a homeborn slave? We've been a slave for so long. Is that what we was born to be? Why are we spoiled? The Lord had to even answer that question, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go into the book of Daniel. Let's go into the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 9. Because this should not be. This should not be. Daniel chapter 9. And we're going to see what the prophet Daniel have to say about this. Daniel chapter 9, and we're going to start reading in verse 7. Daniel 9 and verse 7. All right, my brother, go ahead. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all Israel that are near and that are far off throughout all the countries whether thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. You see who righteousness belong to? Righteousness belong to the Lord because the Lord ain't did nothing but good toward us. But confusion of face belonging to the whole house of Israel because of the trespass that we have trespassed against the true and living God. We didn't do something to him that he didn't deserve. <laughs> we some crazy people. We have spit in the face of the Almighty. Somebody who could just make us disappear with a thought. And we ain't crazy enough to be afraid of him. <laughs> we better than Ishmael. <laughs> Go ahead on and read. O oh Lord, to us belong a confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belongeth mercies and forgiveness, through, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God, to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. In that curse, you can go into the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy and start reading from the 16th verse down into the end, and that has been poured upon us because of our sin against God. Go ahead on and read. And he has confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. What has happened to us as a people has not been done to anybody on the face of the earth. We are the only people on the face of the earth that is not referred to by a country off a continent. And we had a home. But because of our brother Esau and Ishmael who conspired to make the name of Israel no more remembrance, that has been a successful conspiracy. That's right. And because of the anger that the Lord has had against us for our sin against him, we didn't fail from grace. And nobody in the whole world has endured the type of torture and humiliation that we as a people have endured. The book then told you right here. For under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. Go ahead at verse 13. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God. All this evil has come before us, yet we still ain't turning to the Lord. We turn to the government. We turn to everybody but the Lord. Go ahead on and read. That we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore has the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth. For we obeyed not his voice. And you see, this is the only thing the Lord have asked of us. Hearken unto the voice of the Lord and do his commandments. How much do it cost to do that? That's what you really call priceless. Because it don't take no money to do that. Only thing it takes is self-discipline. And because we are so wild, 
and disobedient, this is what gets us in trouble. Look at your children. Because of disobedience, that's why you whoop their butt. And I don't care how much you whoop them and whoop them, you can't beat the disobedience out of them. Because once we get grown, we still disobedient. We kick against the law. And the Lord told us to observe all the laws of man for it is good with God. So that they can't speak evil against you. Because I am still trying to get my people to glorify me. Because until the world know me, the world is on a crash course for destruction. And we're the only ones who can save it. Because we are the priests of the Most High God. Let me show you that. Let's go into 1 Peter. 1 Peter. 1 Peter, chapter 2. After all is said and done, we are still Israel, priests of the Most High God. 1 Peter 2, and we're going to read one verse, verse 9. 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. All right, my brother, go ahead. But ye are a chosen generation. We are a chosen generation. The Lord chose us, didn't he? That's right. Go ahead. A royal priesthood. That's what he chose us to be, a royal priesthood. Go ahead. And a holy nation. Go ahead. A peculiar people. It's a peculiar thing that the whole nation of people supposed to be kings and priests. Go ahead on and read. That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's the only thing we're supposed to do is to show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we're still that. We just don't know it. 